Hello everyone how's going? First of all, I would like to thank you for all the love for the last Viking Conquest diorama. This time I have made a sequel, new Viking scenes, but a different story. A Viking raiding party plundered a monastery in the early Viking age. The monastery is designed with a bell tower and a crypt, and I also recreated the religious frescoes. If you like our miniatures please feel free to subscribe, we will continue to bring you interesting creations. Let's get to work. The scale of this scene is 1 72nd. I'll list the materials used to make it. If any details are missing, feel free to leave a comment. Considering what might have been the case in the 9th century AD, and after consulting a great deal of information, I have adopted a late Roman architectural approach to the decoration of the interior structure. The Viking invasion of Lindisfarne in 793 marked the start of the Viking Age. Following this, anxiety about Viking attacks increased across Britain. However, before Alfred the Great, there was no organized defense against them. It's no wonder that wealthy churches are easy targets for looters. Many of the frescoes and churches from the Saxon period are damaged or faded from age. When I painted, I was inspired by the manuscripts of the time, which were based on the geometric designs of the Celts and the figure drawing techniques of the Greeks. This combination is also reflected in the religious architecture of the time. I deliberately left the frescoes unfinished to enhance the narrative of the scenario. A special table was made for painting and straw was used to make cleaning easier. So back to the building, this time a special cellar was built with barrels. It was the Irish monks who introduced beer brewing to the European continent in the Middle Ages. Beer is even depicted in some religious miracles. It is said that when the abbot of St. Gallen Pont visited the monastery of Fontenay at the beginning of the 7th century, he took out a can of beer and poured it into the cups of 60 monks. This was recorded as a miracle. And even King Alfred explicitly recognized it as an essential beverage for the functioning of society. In addition to the elaborate religious frescoes and underground treasures, I wanted to add some detail to the floor to show the wealth of the abbey. Instead of a wooden floor, this time it was marble. To create this texture, I pulled apart the coarse fleece and painted it in several layers. And finally, to add a little more detail. The inspiration for this scenario came from an account of a sacking of an abbey on the island of Iona in southwest Scotland in 825. At the time, the locals were anticipating a possible Viking invasion. Most of them moved to Kells in Ireland, taking with them some important sacred relics. These probably included the Kells manuscripts, which are now an Irish national treasure. When most of the people fled, only the abbot, St. Blasmac, and some of the monks stayed behind and hid the relics that hadn't made it out in time to be removed. When the Viking plunderers arrived, they were celebrating mass in the abbey church. According to records, the invaders used torture to make him reveal the location of the reliquary but he refused, and the Vikings brutally murdered him in a rage. For his martyrdom and protecting the relics, he became a saint. For the Viking marauders, there would probably have been little interest in a beautifully crafted, handwritten Bible. Perhaps someone would have cut out the illustrations to keep as a souvenir. But there is little evidence that the Vikings would have taken these books as booty. So in this scene, the ornate cross becomes a trophy and the Bible is left behind. While it can't be ruled out that some knowledgeable Viking chieftains deliberately plundered holy relics for ransom, more often than not the Vikings just wanted gold. And of course, there were also the monks who were taken away as slaves. Here, the stone facade of the building is completed. The wooden frame has been treated with oil paint to make the colors more realistic and more durable. The cardboard tiles are cut and applied one by one. This is a time-consuming process, but the results are very good. The windows of medieval churches were generally small, and many were large on the inside and small on the outside, with iron grills for defense. The next step is to create the exterior landscape. The scene is set in autumn and the grass is already yellowing. Throughout the process, 
I kept adjusting the colors of the walls, tiles and floor to keep the tones consistent, but at the same time very layered. You can see that the grass dust used here is not a single color, but a mixture of several colors. The flocking process is usually repeated three to five times and the proportions of colors used are not exactly the same each time. The advantage of this is that the whole turf has a more natural color and condition. This time I bought three boxes of 1 hour 72 minute scale soldier figures, one red star and two eastern european brands I can't name. I tried to model the chairs in the abbey, and 3D printed different furniture in the interior, like wine barrels and treasure chests. As this is an early Viking story, I chose the figures in a more Nordic costume. I also added the Vikings threatening the monks. Modified a torch in the hand of a Viking in the cellar, which was wrapped in handkerchiefs and fixed with glue. For the final step, I used PVC wood grain paper to wrap the floor. Many of you left comments about wanting to see my cats in the last episode. They'll be out at the end of the film. After checking all the details, this diorama scene is finally finished. Thank you all for watching. If you like our work, welcome to follow our channel. Thanks again everyone, see you next time.